Once upon a time, in a town just like this, snowfall blanketed, a time called Christmas. Folks wrapped up, warm with children in tow, while Santa Claus watched them milling below. Did I ever tell you the story? The one where our dog fell sick at Christmas and we made it our mission to save him. Twas the 90s and Christmas Eve, but we were already sick of Christmas this year. We had been to Phoenix to meet Santa and get a free selection box. But Santa had yelled at us for some reason and so we'd left empty-handed and sad. Back home, the smell of the chip pan hung in the air. Other kids round our way would go to the chippy on Christmas Eve. A treat. But Mam would always chop potatoes, pop them in the deep fat fryer and then wrap them up in newspaper, drowning them in salt and vinegar. They were actually nicer than the chippies. But me and Ivan, we always felt duped. But still, we loved her for the effort. Christmas Eve was never that exciting for me and Ivan. Since I could remember, we would go into my mum's wardrobe and get out the toys that she'd been stashing away for months, play with them, and then put them back exactly as we'd found them. Last year, Ivan got an Atari ST. We actually took that out in late October, hooked it up and played with it for two hours while mum was at work. She was none the wiser. The excitement of getting caught was much better than the surprise on Christmas morning. I hate surprises anyway. But this year, there were no presents stashed away. Our dog and best friend had had a footballing injury and needed a knee replacement, and that cost money. We decided as a family to put all the Christmas money towards an operation, so... No presents for us. And we prayed we'd find the rest of the money in time. On this Christmas Eve, I felt strange. A few nights before, something odd had happened. I couldn't sleep. I was restless in bed and I was sure I heard something outside. I peeped out of my window and I swear... I saw a man in jet black pyjamas and slippers and a long white beard standing on the roof of the block of flats opposite. I quickly shut my curtains, my heart was beating and I ran into Ivan's room to wake him up. But he just told me to get lost and that I was dreaming, annoyed. I went back to my window, but the man was gone. So tonight I felt worried about going to bed. What if I saw him again? I knew it was probably a dream or a mistake, but it had frightened me. As we sat on the sitting room floor eating our chips and playing, I heard a noise of bells going past the window. Ivan heard it too. And just then, there was a loud knock at the door. And when Mum said to leave it, no one is knocking at this hour round our way. But then, we heard the strangest thing coming from outside. Ho, ho, ho! It's only me! Parents, children, come join in the glee! Dad shouted, Do not open that door! It'll just be that drunk fella again! But Ivan was already there, and he had unlocked it. Suddenly, a huge gust of wind blew open the door, knocking Ivan backwards. Standing in the doorway was none other than scary bearded roof man, although he was fully clothed now in a magnificent red velvet suit. Come on, come all, Santa is here. Come join the feast, celebration and cheer. Me and Ivan watched as he marched away down the hallway, banging on other doors as he went. Presents, tinsel, magic and more. Come follow me as I pass by your door. Santa Claus disappeared down the main stairwell leading to the grounds outside. 
One by one, our neighbours began looking out and then following the smell that was coming from the direction of the court outside. Me and Ivan followed the crowd, some that we'd never seen or met before. There was an electricity in the air that night as we all made our way down the stairs and out into the normally dark and miserable courtyard in between the flats. Santa walked away towards a gargantuan Christmas tree, waving his arms high above his head and roaring at his elves to keep pulling on the winches. Yes, there were elves too. I jumped with fright as fire burst out of a big pan cooking on the stove in the centre of the usually empty grotty courtyard. The elves were cooking and carrying brightly coloured parcels and guiding a line of reindeers breathing out fog as they walked around and around amongst the crowds. It was snowing and the mossy stone bricks of the court and central gardens were beginning to become buried under a thick cake of white and an enormous Christmas tree was slotted into place and a ladder fixed to it leading to a throne decorated with holly and ivy and gold and tinsel. Santa Claus climbed up slowly and took his place on the chair looking down at the feast below. The parents were tucking in to the magnificent smelling free food of the feast. There were sausages wrapped in bacon and buns, cakes bursting with chocolate syrup, seasoned sprouts and huge turkeys carved up onto plates for everyone. Meanwhile, the children were tearing into the presents, ripping the silvery red, blue and grey wrapping paper away to reveal the gifts Santa Claus had brought for them. They were all impossibly expensive toys new, just out this year. And there were more people coming into the court from outside, from all across town, smiling folk, happy folk, joining them in this wonderful smelling enclosure amongst the flats, breathing in the electric and kerosene charged air. Me and Ivan stood below the throne of Father Christmas, looking out in disbelief at the magical night that was unfolding before our eyes. What are you waiting for, my children? Go, take what you can. Take it away. It's all part of a plan. Santa bellowed down to us, making us jump slightly. I shouted back. I don't believe in you. Santa's not real and your elves are fake too. Don't I recognise you? said Ivan. You don't believe that magic is real? Well, open some parcels, then see how you feel. You think that all around you is a sham? Well, I'll prove I am who I say I am. Look over yonder, your parents believe. Open your hearts and you will receive. Me and Ivan looked at each other. What are you speaking like that for? And stop rhyming literally everything? You sound like a total creep. Our parents waved at us with a mouthful of food and give us a thumbs up. Listen, one and all, I say. All of this is free. Quickly, take it away. And with that, everyone left gathering up the gifts and plates of food that they'd been given, their arms piled high with all the freebies. The elves were helping people on their way, waving, smiling, putting party hats on people's heads as they left. I could see Mum and Dad leaving with everyone else, walking away with a twinkle in their eye. Our dog, Rex, hopped behind them also, with a full tummy of chicken and wearing a party hat himself. I turned up to Santa, who was watching on, looking so super chuffed he could burst. I remember the silence as the snow fell down gently, passing by the crescent moon above. The elves and the reindeer had all left by now too, leaving this magical wonderland behind them that they'd built up in such a short time. And for just that moment, me and Ivan stood and breathed in the cold, crisp air of the night. What the actual hell? I mean, really, what the actual hell? Why are you doing all of this? We didn't even ask Santa for presents this year. We just want our dog fixed. All of a sudden, 
Armed police swooped in. Quickly, the courtyard became completely flooded with police officers. Me and Ivan froze and stared up at Santa, his eyes twinkling back at us. Freeze! Police! Freeze! Jeff? Jeff Jefferson! Santa Claus, you need to respond. This is Detective Inspector Truman. We've tracked you down. It's over. I need you to follow my instructions. Please nod slowly if you understand. Santa nodded and smiled, while me and Ivan stood frozen. Let the two children and the dog in front of you walk away and climb down from the throne slowly. I will do as you say, but I have my confession. May I read it now at your discretion? Truman looked around as if lost and dumbfounded. Then he nodded slowly, as if some magic Christmas spell had taken over him. Santa gestured carefully with his white gloves and then slowly leaned over to a branch on the Christmas tree. He unhooked a decorative scroll that was tied up with red ribbon. He began to read it out loud. Earlier this week, in a town department store, I played Father Christmas in this same hat and shawl. This long white beard I grew just for the season. With the love of this town and its children, the reason. But love can be tested and occasionally break, as children turn cruel with the fun they can make. My anger had flared a few times at my station, which was part of the course for my chosen vocation. But this one time, in a vengeful attack, a kid had tugged hard on my old green cloth sack and torn open a hole, ending its life at long last and the love sewn in by my wife before she passed. My rage bubbled over as others waited to come in, and impatient parents began causing a din. Without being summoned, two were pushed through the door by a weary young mum driven mad by the store. In that moment, my rage had boiled to a peak as I spun and I snarled and I yelled at their cheek. The look in their eyes has haunted me since, with the tears and the fear and the hope draining hence. I knew who they were, but they didn't know me, the sweetest of children, Ivan and Holly. With the magic of Christmas evaporating into the night, I came up with a way to make all things right. Now, I don't really have much to call my own, with a basic state pension and an unsellable home. But there was not much to speak of under their tree in the Lasseter home of flat number three. With everyone's home facing everyone else's, it was easy to watch them up from the terraces. So when the streets were all empty below, I dashed over rooftops through the silent snow. I snuck to the mall and I took it to task. Hidden safe in black pyjamas and mask. With security cords I'd stolen hence, I walked straight through the security fence, all the way into my Christmas grotto, where the credit card details were stored on a BBC micro. Everyone who had visited me was stored on that disc. Their payment details, names and addresses... So I went down the list and I checked it twice, deciding which of those children had been naughty or nice. Like the real Santa did many centuries ago, in a tiny village lost in the snow. I took the names of the children that were bad and punished their families by stealing what they had. I robbed all their houses and gave it to others the sweetest of children with nice fathers and mothers. I paid for this night with their credit cards 
and although bankrupting them may seem rather hard, it's the rest of the year that concerns me now, as those same rotten folks run amok in our town. Maybe this will take some of the wind from their sail, and make them think twice as I head off to jail. My home has been sold at a much reduced price. So Merry Christmas, and to all a good night. Santa dropped the scroll as the police officers swooped in and grabbed him, dragging him down from his throne. I remember the cold tears on my face as I watched him being handcuffed. Other officers scooped us up, but Ivan pulled away from the officer's grip and ran back towards Santa. I followed behind, weaving in and out of the officer's legs. Ivan and I began kicking and punching at the back of the officer's cord, but we were caught and pulled back again and held by the stairwell. We stood there helplessly and watched as five officers carried Santa away, his long, white beard flapping in the wind. He managed to throw me a wink before he was thrown into the back of a police van. Had this happened today, I'm sure a police officer would have seen us home. Or maybe social services would have got involved. But it was the 90s. Me and Ivan walked back to our flat with our dog in tow, alone. Back home, Mum and Dad were none the wiser, dancing around the living room to Shagan Stevens and necking the free brews that they'd been given. They hadn't heard the helicopters above or the megaphone. Me and Ivan went up to my room and looked out at the rooftop where I had seen that strange figure and wondered where he was now. Ivan nudged me and hit me on the head with something. It was the scroll. He picked it up in all the kerfuffle and pushed it down his coat sleeve. A sweet memento of our weirdly wonderful Christmas that year. Me and Ivan decided to top and tail that night. And our dog with his broken leg slept by our bed, still donning the hat that the elves had given him. He looked like a fool. I loved him so much. After a short but deep sleep, we walked together on Christmas morning. In houses all over the world, children would be racing down the stairs so fast that they could almost fly. But me and Ivan, we dawdled down, still a little dazed and tired. We found our parents in the sitting room playing with the toys we'd been given. Me, Ivan and our dogs sat and watched them. Rex was still playing with the scroll, a reminder that it hadn't just been a dream. Ivan wrestled it from his mouth and then suddenly gasped. And he read from the open scroll. What the hell is wrong with you, Ivan? Ivan threw the scroll at me. Read it, the, the bottom part. Santa didn't read all of it last night. Once upon a time, in a town just like this, snowfall blanketed a time called Christmas. Folks wrapped up warm with children in tow, while Santa Claus watched them milling below. Now some of the children were selfless and kind, with the needs of others first on their mind. A dog is for life and not just for Christmas, so Santa believes there's no need to discuss. We'll all play together one final time, a treasure hunt with clues in the rhyme. What's short and fat and makes a cute sound? You should never put a hat on a... What? He thought for a second and then all together we said, Hound! We all looked at our dog who was still wearing the hat that was placed on his head by the elves. We took it off and inspected it closely and within the folds of the paper of the hat we found a cheque for £47,000. Our wish had been granted by Santa and we could fix our dog after all. Money and coin will drive the best of us bad and all through my life it has made me so sad. But giving to others when you've enough for yourself is the truth of this season and the true meaning of wealth. <laughs>